for meditation. Yes, yeah, for you, so you can read the book, yeah. yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't like stretching it so bright. Okay, we, we quit. Sure enough, you can relax now. You're still flexing over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my swap for you. Yeah, I'm flexing. It was hurting me. Day 177, Ocean First in the Morning. To remember that we are part of a vast continent is the only way to be transformed. We have not really to drop anything because the very idea of separation is false. It is just an idea. It is like somebody who is calculating and making the same mistake again and again. 2 plus 2 is 5. All that is needed is to understand that 2 plus 2 is not 5. 2 plus 2 is 4. Once it is understood, everything becomes clear. This is just a mathematical error, a mistake. It arises for certain reasons. We have separate bodies and that gives the idea of separation. We have separate minds and that gives the idea of separation. But we are neither the body nor the mind. We are consciousness. The moment you start feeling yourself as a consciousness, then there is no separation. Then 2 plus 2 is 4. Before that, 2 plus 2 is everything except 4. Sometimes it is 3, sometimes it is 5, but it is never 4. To live in the illusion of separation is bound to create problems, and the problems go on and on accumulating. They cannot be solved unless we change our very approach from the beginning. A radical change is needed, not some re reformation, and that radical change happens when we drop our personality into the ocean of existence, when the dewdrop of the ego disappears into the ocean. We don't lose anything when we gain. We simply lose our small boundaries, and we become vast and infinite. And in that vastness is fragrance. Day 178. Meditation is a way of surrendering the ego. Meditation is surrender, the very essence of surrender. Ordinarily, we cling to our egos. In every possible way, we try to prove the ego. Meditation means we drop the whole trip, we drop the whole number. We are no longer interested in proving the ego because we can see the falsity of it and the whole absurdity. Seeing it, one allows it to drop. Seeing the fertility and the misery that it brings, one surrenders it and immediately a transformation takes place. Whenever you are emptied of the ego, something of the beyond rushes in and immediately fills your inner vacuum. That rush of energy from the beyond is existence. Meditation makes the way for the rush of the beyond. But we are so full of ourselves that we go on missing. We have to empty ourselves totally. It has to be a total effort, not half-hearted, not lukewarm. Because even if we even a part of the ego remains, it is enough to keep the beyond away from you. The ego has to be dropped in total. The emptiness has to be utterly, utterly empty, and then there is no barrier. Then the guest comes in. The emptiness becomes the host of existence, and there is no other way to know existence. Um, that may have been impressive. Um, um, always have to be mindful of that because sometimes what we achieve in, li in living, we can, um, I guess, express it as ego. And sometimes it is hard to let go unless it's um, unless you made um, knowledgeable of it. Um, what you accomplish in, in your job and your task can actually uh, say your ego will be equivalent to becoming what we call <laughs> becoming big headed. And you have to, once, once you are knowledgeable of it, then you can lower your, you, I guess once you become knowledgeable of it, you can start to look at becoming humble in you know, what you've accomplished in living. And that hopefully will be able to bring you back down 
to where you need to be. It's not easy. I have to often practice it myself. Often. It's a, it's a persevering. Thank you. Freedom is the most divine phenomenon, hence never sacrifice your freedom for anything whatsoever, not even for love, because nothing is higher than freedom. Everything can be sacrificed for freedom, even life, but freedom cannot be sacrificed for anything. Even God can be sacrificed for freedom, but freedom cannot be sacrificed for God. Buddha does not believe in God, but he believes in freedom. Mahavira never believed in God, but he believed in freedom. They could discard the hypnosis of God, but they could not discard the hypnosis of freedom. In fact, Buddha is the re or freedom is the real God. That makes a lot of sense. You know, it gives me to think of you know the saying that people say, you know, the things that you end up owning end up owning you. <laughs> and people could be attached to you know material things or certain positions in life, but once you let those material things positions go, that's when you get your freedom. That's why you put up that being a dummy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I ain't there yet. I ain't learned enough yet. Don't have me inside. Read that passage right before the pool game. <laughs> Day 180, I was reading some lines of Walt Whitman. I love those lines. He was one of the most significant poems who ever walked on earth. He says, I celebrate myself, I sing myself, and what I assume you shall assume. For every atom belonging to me belongs to you as well. That message of celebration is the message of all the seers, of all those who have known. And it is particularly my message. Let your whole heart say, I celebrate myself, I sing myself. But remember, the self is not the ego. The self is something beyond the ego. The ego is your creation, the self is part of God, the self is part of the Supreme Self. The self does not make you a separate individual, it does not make an island of you. It keeps you one with the whole, hence the celebration, hence the joy, hence the ecstasy. Walt Whitman's line defines my sanyas precisely, remember this. Love, bliss, celebration, God, truth, freedom, they are different aspects of the same phenomenon. Ego is dropped, you enter into multidimensional reality which contains all of these. 
but one certainly needs courage, one needs guts. Be courageous enough to live wholeheartedly, to live in tune with the infinite, with the eternal. First, start learning to move from the known toward the unknown, and your life will become a great excitement, a great joy, a great surprise. Every moment, something new is happening, and then one day, take the ultimate risk, move from the unknown to the unknowable. The difference is that the unknown will become known, and the no unknowable will never become known. That unknowable is existence. But first, learn to move from the known to the unknown. That is learning to swim in shallow water. And when you have learned to swim, go into the ocean with no fear with absolute fearlessness, and then your life will know what ecstasy is. With the unknown, you will know excitement. With the unknowable, you will come to know ecstasy. something that you know you feel the anxiety feel the anxiety in yourself to um, tell them what you know about it as well but if you um, though you have knowledge of it if you play it as though you don't have knowledge of it that could be a um, it's, it's like um, because you don't want to it's like um, standing in front of the crowd versus standing in the back of the crowd. Right. You know, um, could it be paraphrasing that as well? Or um, interpreted like that? Because that's an ultimate statement. If you have knowledge of, you know, if you give a party and you tell everybody, be well, yeah, bring your own body, be wild, and bring your own food, and be prepared to wash your, your own dishes. <laughs> but I'll, I'll give you the, um, the place where you party. I ain't going to attend, but I'll play the music. <laughs> You know, we're not getting excited about what you know and not feeling the urge to express it that you know. But that's pretty deep. It's going to make you have to go into the unknown and then go further into the unknown. It's kind of like the movie Inception. And you know, Bill DiCaprio was the um, dreams for which you to go into and then go deeper into a dream. To courage is the greatest religious quality. Everything else is secondary. You cannot be truthful if you are not courageous. You cannot be loving if you are not courageous. You cannot be trusting if you are not courageous. You cannot inquire into reality if you are not courageous. Hence, courage comes first and everything else follows. But the so-called religious people have been teaching just the opposite. Rather than helping people to be courageous, they help people to become more and more afraid. They create the fear of God in people and the fear of hell and the fear of punishment, and out of fear they hope to create a love for God. That is sheer nonsense. It is impossible. 
It is only out of fearlessness that love can arise. It is only out of fearlessness that one can go into the inquiry of the ultimate. It is a long voyage and voyage into the unknown. Cowards won't be able to leave this shore. And religion means a great longing for the other shore, which is not visible from this side. That gives an explanation why I've gone into Buddhism as a way of finding happiness. Because of the um, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, you know, that you're punished. But in Buddhism, they have call it the five precepts. And it's, it's acknowledged as long as you can practice them, then you will reach what it is you seek, which is the ultimate stage, as mentioned in Nirvana, but getting yourself away from attachments is the main course. And once you have done that, attachment to drinking, attachment to hoarding, attachment to lusting, attachment to, you know, um, thou should not. <laughs> um, it's pretty deep. I like that. And that's 181, Osha, 182. That's 182. 182, cool. That's cool. I like that. Yes. Yeah, and that's sure that you speak about. That's uh, once you're able to, you decide to stay on the shore that you are to help those into enlightenment instead of crossing over into infinity. That is the Bodhisattva. That is what I seek. Thank you for that. Thank you for your reflection. 183. Miracles abound when you have courage. They happen every moment because each moment the courageous man goes on dropping the known. That's what real courage is. Whatsoever is known has to be dropped. You have lived it. You have experienced it. There is no need to cling to it. Cling to it will prevent the new from happening. The new needs space. Where can it happen if the old is occupying the space? The courageous man goes on dropping the past, the old, the known, and is always ready to go into the unknown. It needs guts because one never knows what is going to happen in the next moment. It is unpredictable. The familiar is predictable. Even if it is miserable, you are familiar with it and you have become accustomed to it. Bliss is only for the courageous. Bliss is really the constant dropping of the past. Bliss is dying to the past, being born anew each moment. that you're doing. I like them. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, you come out that front door going to work at night time, I know that I'm going to run into a seven foot <laughs> again on the, uh, on the, on the uh, platform on the L. Yes, yeah, I see. Uh, that statement that I'm uh, reading is encouraging. to this school, am I staying at my old school <laughs> to learn something new where I could drop everything that I knew before, which I'm not going to say I forgot anything, but to embrace it, it's like I have to let that go. Mm -hmm. But it also reminds me of just relationships with people, which this is going to sound like bipolar, but <laughs> it's like you have uh, somebody you don't get along with, like somebody in the neighborhood. And like you all can fight like every time y'all see each other but that one time that you see the person is like all right well do i just not say anything or do i say what's up <laughs> and you know the person can be courageous enough to you know bury the hatchet right then and there
After I get there, then as I get through the day, I just have to be mindful that, um, let them say what they say and not really try to let it spark me, you know, but, um, try to show a um, side that is not necessarily passive, but, um, congenial and, um, so, I'm going to push the other way. Of course, I, I come out if I have to. But yeah, you have to be, um, have to have courage. It's the first time I had meditation and uh, everybody speaks except for Bang. Yeah. Oh, no. Come on, Bang. Come on now. And then you stretch and go and talk. Yeah, the topic is very delicate and I don't want to get the wrong impression. Yeah.